Hello everyone, and welcome to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. And in this series, the Kerbals have discovered the remains of an ancient civilization on their planet. And that civilization, apparently through little recordings that have been decoded by the Kerbals, uh, were destroyed by something called asteroids. Now, the Kerbals had no idea about these asteroids prior to watching these recordings from this, these uh, previous peoples that populated their planet. But uh, now, they looked out on their system, and sure enough, they saw these objects, these unknown objects that could potentially come in and hurt them seriously and soon in fact last seen a minute ago and they started tracking these things and some of them some of them oh that one's looking like it's gonna smash into us actually I was hoping that the first one wouldn't uh, anyway <laughs> so so now we have an explanation for why the Kerbals are so interested in in achieving space flight and uh, doing science in space, it is because they are deadly afraid of being uh, annihilated by asteroids. All right, so uh, well, let's keep an eye on this one. And but for now, our capabilities are not such that we can we can actually do anything about it. We'll we'll have to rush. Let's go to the VAB. This is a completely stock and career mode series, so that's going to be something I'll say up front. And we are going to try and get through the... Because I went through the tech tree, the tree pretty leisurely last time, I'm going to somewhat rush through it this time. Uh, the last time being with 0.23. Okay, and so we're going to try and rush through it. And I'm going to... Oh, uh, naming conventions are always annoying. I think uh, for for uh, speed uh, on the missions that I want to do quickly, I'm just going to name it A1. And uh, notice we do have a NASA flag now. Uh, I've put my own flag in, but it doesn't seem to show up yet. Uh, I guess that's because first time loading it up, it didn't uh, really have it. Oh, I don't know why. Okay, uh, so I'm going to. I don't think this what I'm gonna do right now is anything NASA would have done, so I'm gonna stick to default there. And this can only be taken up by Jeb, clearly. So let's get out to launch pad and not waste any time because this is all stuff we've done before. Okay, uh, obviously I need to fix staging here. Let me quickly do that. And SAS on and go. So this is going to be a thing where we have to get the Kerbals ready to combat asteroids as quickly as possible. And uh, so that's what I'm doing here. As you can see, we are not wasting any time. Let us get our science. We need as much science as possible, as quickly as possible. I'm not going to try any of the... Uh, I'm still going to try and keep my Kerbals safe. So I'm not going to try any mission that will risk them. After all, uh, the whole point of the asteroid defense uh, missions is that we want to keep Kerbal safe. And so it'd be kind of silly wasting Kerbal lives like that. I have set the time to 24 hour Earth time. And that's because I've actually done a lot of calculations based on 24 hour Earth time. And I would rather that not be useless. Uh, I do like being able to switch it to this. Actually, mission time is practically useless in most situations, at least if you're not uh, designing a rocket that you already know all the uh, all the ins and outs of. So having the overall time is somewhat helpful. Okay, uh, we are starting to go down. Uh, we're slow enough that I can just pop the parachutes here and turn off SAS. Okay, and I want to hurry up with this because it's all very basic stuff. Okay, shoot open, and if anybody's gonna do this, it's Jeb. We're gonna have him EVA here, get an EV report in this precarious position, and then board. Time warp down. Now I explained in my previous series, 
the reason why I use the solid rocket booster instead of a liquid tank and the other rocket is because that this weighs less so one parachute can carry it all down uh, with plenty of margin to spare now I'm gonna take my service sample yes keep data and EV report all right board and recover okay 29 science but let's not uh, let's not be too slow about this so now I want to just have the raw capsule thing and we'll have Bill do it because um, you know not the guy we want to entrust on a space mission just yet so let's call this A2 oh let's not call it anything let's just go all right okay quickly Bill get your crew report from the launch pad excellent and EVA plop down oh come on scramble 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 take surface sample very good and EV report no the space suit wasn't necessary at least we don't think so and uh, yeah time warp okay I mean this is good enough uh, let's see takes surface oh uh, oh, I have to put it back in it's been so long since I've done uh, multiple surface samples in a particular location because we always go interplanetary and in that case you just pick one up yep uh, stow those in there uh, store experiments okay very good I think this should already be the KSC yes it is okay we'll get that much Oh, come on. Up, up. Okay, grab and board. And another 24 signs from that. Done. And let's go to the R&D building. So we can open up basic rocketry and survivability. We've been down this road before. And uh, I'm just going to go with a similar pattern. Uh, I'm going to... Well, yeah, let's research that too while we're at it. Okay, back to the VAB and let's build some more complicated rockets. So here we're going to have this and kind of have a radial decoupler on it now. And we've got these engines and those engines, but right now we don't need to have all of that uh, complication. Let's just have this first. Oops, no, no, shift. Okay, and this should be good enough for our next mission. Yep. Bob, and different engines, so B1. Sorry for the rocket names, but let's get on with it. Okay, SAS on, throttle this up, and go. We're going retrograde this time. And obviously we're gonna touch down and try and do grasslands. So yeah, uh, I'll slow it down once we get some lights. Uh, I want to play around with the lights a bit, but this is all very familiar stuff, hopefully to people who have watched. Oh, we aren't going very horizontal, are we? Okay, go on. Who have watched stuff I've done before? If you're a beginner, uh, well, just do what I'm doing right now. Okay, and that off, and yeah. Excellent. Okay, Bill, not Bob, sorry. Uh, getting Bill and Bob mixed up. Always a tradition. Okay, yes, yes, the space suit was not necessary. Next time we'd like to see you try without the space suit. Okay, let's uh, recover this. Right, so 12 more science. Let's go back to VAB. 
And let us start multi-staging our rockets, shall we? Uh, let's let's go let's go to uh, space. Let's just go to space. Um, we'll, we'll let that hang out for a sec. And my typical first rocket looks like this. There is a logic to this, obviously. Oh, actually, we can... No, I'll keep that too. If we're going into space, we might as well go into orbit. There's no point doing a halfway mission. We'll get as much science as we can. And we'll... No, not that one. This one. We'll just have to go for the moon after that. And... That there, that there. Okay. There's undoubtedly a C1. And we could put some more science on. We could put the goo containers. Yeah, there's no good place to snap on the goo containers yet. Not until we get the science juniors is there a good place to put the goo containers. So I'll do that at the same time. Okay, let's not waste any time. Alright, out to launch pad. So yeah, this new version, Jeb is up there again, that's good. This new version doesn't have anything new by way of uh, aerodynamics or anything like that, but it does have uh, better joint reinforcement than we've had in previous versions. Now, I'm not going to be the one to test that theory, because as you know, I, I build my rockets pretty well as it is, though I might leave off some struts here and there where I normally put them in order to try that out. We'll see. I might, I mean, I don't want to start building my rockets all crazy like, so... So we'll keep things civil around here. Make sure, uh, make sure most of our rockets could bear the NASA logo if, uh, if NASA used tanks like this for some reason. Okay, I think Jeb knows he's going to space today. Alright, let's start uh, getting him into more of an orbital situation. Okay, trying to do the gravity turn in uh, sort of a ideal stock KSP way. Well, frame rates here, uh, frame rates here are good. Uh, sometimes there's choppiness, but right now we're getting uh, 30 frames per second. As as would be expected. Uh, I, when I'm recording, I limit it to 30. So. Oh, I keep uh, thinking I have to burn in one continuous go, uh, for the sake of people watching who might not know all about curl system. You don't have to do that, obviously. Uh, there's there are mods that require you to do that, which real rockets would have to do, uh, burn, uh, because there are no relights on mini rockets. Um, but in stock KSP, you don't have to do that. So I don't have to either here. And in that case, you should, once you've got your peak, your apoapsis, at the point you want it to be, you can just burn around there to complete your orbit as long as you know you have enough time to do the burn to do this part. And right around where the two are perpendicular from you, a 90 degree angle from you, is as close to circular as you're gonna get. So this is our as close to circular orbit as we're gonna get, 134 by 126. And there you are. Jeb. Jeb is in orbit.
and Jeb is now going to do science in orbit. Um, let's see. Well, let's do a crew report first. Yeah. And let me try and find the hatch. Well, I guess we can just have him pop out. EVA. Okay, above the water. High probability of that being our first report anyway. But let's go to the right side to, uh, so we can see what biomes were over and have him do the reports there. Next we should get somebody into polar orbit as, as usual. Okay, we're definitely over a different biome now. Grasslands. Seems like we should be hitting highlands soon. Let's say here. Mountains, so oh, good. Those are harder to get than highlands. Let's try it again. Nope, still mountains. Alright. Let's just go a little bit further. Let's try it here. Highlands. There we go. Deserts. Excellent. Okay, so Jeb has made a complete orbit now. I guess uh, I guess that's good enough for now. Let's try and plot his return back home. So, maneuver node system somewhat uh, improved. Uh, we'll we'll see about that. We've got this little X to get rid of the maneuver node without going into this screen. That's definitely an improvement. I think I'm gonna go for that. All right. So, 19 minutes. Okay, time for the retro burn. We definitely have enough fuel to do uh, polar orbit, I think. Let's try and get this a little bit more accurate. We are talking about atmospheric re-entry after all. Okay, well, thinks I've got a check mark there. Ah, uh, that's pretty check marky, actually. Yeah, I can deal with that. Okay, so that part's done. Let's bring her in. So for Kerbin, the atmosphere is responsible for slowing you down, of course. Uh, on other plants, there might not be an atmosphere, so you don't get to do this part. You actually have to burn your rocket in order to slow yourselves down. Otherwise, you're going to uh, you're going to smash into the ground at a very high speed. But here, it's all right. And without any uh, deadly reentry, which is another mod, uh, without that installed, uh, I don't have to worry about decoupling this part on the way down until I really need to pop the parachutes. And that's because the re-entry heat will not kill me. If re-entry heat was an issue, there's no way I could keep this. I need the heat shielding on the bottom of the pod in order to survive. Ah, oh, darn. Uh, we're going into the nighttime side, it looks like. Yeah. Well, once we get lighting, I promise, I'm going to be using those lights. 
now that we've got colored lights I'm gonna be color coding my rockets basically Oop. time warp uh, makes things a little bit jittery okay we've been slowed down I don't know exactly where we are I hope we're not hitting any mountains I mean, I see mountains up there, but... Okay, uh, shoot, 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 shoot. Uh, can't see anything, so... It was late popping the parachute there. But we should be fine, as long as we don't hit rough ground. Ooh, that was serious G-forces. Uh, the, um, the explosion you heard was actually the other stage hitting the ground. But uh, Jeb survived those G-forces, and uh, we are safely on our way back down. But again, rough terrain means that this thing could tumble when it hits the ground, and that's not good. So let's see if that happens or not. Uh, C being a very difficult thing to say because we can barely... Oh, okay, it landed on a good surface. All right, let's recover. Excellent, 55 points from this mission. As you can see, plenty of EVA reports. Uh, the next logical one would be the polar one. But let's get some more science. Uh, some more technology, I mean. Okay, uh, I, I've been pining for light. So, uh, but actually we don't get lights, do we? But we do get the Science Junior and that'll be helpful. So let's get that and batteries, very important. And we might as well fill out our stages along the way. So let's do that. Okay, uh, so let's slap on a Science Junior, and like I had said, the uh, goo container can go on that so that we can recover those properly. Let's go to the VAB. Right, so now we need to modify this a little bit. We need to sneak in the Science Junior. Two goo containers using angle snap. That that's about 0.5 tons, which is a lot uh, compared to just the one ton that the uh, pod normally weighs. So we add a little bit more parachute support, and I think we're gonna need boosters. Let's test out this whole rigidity thing, shall we? A little bit uh, worried about this. Ooh. Uh, okay, well, let's get rid of this stage then. And I guess we can scoot it up now that we've got rid of that stage. I don't normally use solid rocket boosters, but if there was ever a time for it, here it is. Now we do want to limit their thrust because they're way overpowered right now. Uh, that should be fine. Just doing a little bit of... Um, oh, well, let's, let me explain my math. Okay, so the booster that we had at the bottom here was um, this one. 250 thrust. So all we need is 250 thrust to lift this center stack. So we know we've, we need at least that to lift the center stack. How much do we need to lift these? Well, combined, their mass is about 32 tons, so we need at least 320 to lift them. So 320 plus 250 is six, uh, whoa, whoa, 570. So 570 thrust is what we need to lift them. Each of these produces 315, so combined, they produce about 1,200. And so I can limit it to less than 50% and it should still be fine. And I'm just going to run these solid boosters first. Um, I guess we could uh, run them at 50%. That'd be quite a nump, though. Uh, okay, yeah, let's let's get it closer to... Let's go to 48. Okay, um, put that there. Alright, well, let's see if this stays rigid. Uh, this, this is definitely a D. Okay, and we've got all sorts of science to work with. 
And uh, let's see who's silly enough to ride this sort of thing. Uh, Bill. Let's go. Alright, unfortunately it's dark, but asteroids are on their way and we've got no time to waste, so let's launch. So normally I wouldn't put solid rocket boosters on without struts. So far they seem to be holding out quite well. We're going into polar orbit. Oh, we've got some roll here. It's getting tough to counter the natural tendencies of these solid boosters. They want to roll for some reason. Okay. Okay, please start doing gravity turn. Please start doing gravity turn. Uh... Okay. Can't really see if the solid boosters were gonna knock anything, but let's let's get rotating here. Now, the new engines have very good effects, but uh, we need some revamp on some of these uh, old stock engines as well. We'll see some new effects once we get to those parts, obviously, and I'm trying to get to that as soon as possible. But, uh, I think uh, going through the tech tree is a good way to go. Well, I guess we could do one in the high atmosphere. Not worth as much as some of the stuff uh, higher up will, but... Oh, I should have had uh, Jeb do a surface sample wherever he happened to land. But it was in the dark, so I didn't want to risk anything. Hmm, our apolapse is getting quite high. Okay, let's let's shut off the engine. Okay, 154 by 143. Fine. And now let's do a goo experiment in space. Observe the mystery goo. And it has clumped into a sphere. Also appears brittle. Yes. Yes. This is very important information. Perhaps perhaps this actually mimics the composition of asteroids. The microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structures. Loose objects are also flying around the bay in a very messy but fascinating way. Very good. Alright, Bill, let's see if we're at the pole yet. EVA please. Ice caps, indeed. All right, we've got those observations. Let's see about the tundra. And then we'll aim for a precision landing at the pole. So, uh, yep, let's EVA. Let's see. No, still the ice caps. Uh, hang on there. And let's see. Try now. No? Keep hanging on there. No. Nope. Okay, uh, board first. Don't want him losing his grip. Well, of course, we've got the jetpack and uh, he would be able to uh, he'll be able to maneuver about but 
I'm never very good at that, so let's not waste time. Ah, there we go, we got Tundra board. Alright, with that, I think we should plot for a landing at this location. So let's try that. And we'll have plenty of fuel. In fact, I think we have enough fuel to go to the moon with this. But I don't want to use the solid boosters again. We'll we'll have liquid boosters. We'll see about this whole good joint thing. And uh, put a lot of tanks together to make side boosters. After all, uh, even though we don't have really long tanks, if we put a lot of small tanks together, we can make a booster, right? And if the joints are all nice and good, that shouldn't be a problem. What is the problem is that we're going to be in the dark, no matter what I do. We're on the Terminator here. We're on the really. Um, we could hang out here for a while and then maybe touch down on this side as the planet rotates. But I'm impatient. We're all impatient. How long have we been at this? A whole hour and 56 minutes uh, game time. Hmm. Well, the asteroid is much closer now, isn't it? So let's not let's not waste any time. Definitely enough fuel for a uh, moon transfer. But we're not in the right orbit for that. Uh, you can't be in a pol well. It's not good to be in a polar orbit in order to do a moon transfer. That would not be the best way to go. Oh, whoa. Oh, I guess we're right over the South Pole now. Well, that's good timing for uh, if you want to make a landing on the North Pole. You always want to do your retro burns on the opposite, opposite side of the planet, so... This is how it's going to be. Alright. That's good enough. Okay. Actually, if we go prograde now, we'll be heading retrograde on the other side. Ooh. Okay, come on. All right. Ike. Hmm. Oh no, we're hitting the atmosphere already? Oh, this is lower orbit than I thought it was. Hmm. Well, we can do stuff about that. We've got plenty of fuel. I want to hit the pole. Maybe I should... Now this is not something you'll do with deadly re-entry, but uh, we can boost our orbit a little bit and make sure we don't go down too soon here alright that should be enough I think we'll see I could have just kept it over the pole and just do a quick burn over the pole without uh, even thinking too much about it and that's pretty close to what we're gonna do anyway And the reason we're lining up the pool is, of course, because we want the soil sample and the EVA report. We're not going to be able to get uh, Bill back in the capsule, though. That's going to be a problem. We'll have to retrieve him separately.
We need to develop ladder technology here. Okay, this should be fine. Let's uh, retro burn like crazy. Oh hey, this is lit for some reason. Let's let's try and land here, even though it doesn't look lit on this thing. I guess it's a glancing blow from the sun here. This is the North Pole right here. That's why we're sort of spinning around, you can see. That's why the our location is sort of going around the compass. I'm just going to burn out this stage, I think. Oh, maybe not. This is good enough. Okay, down we go. Okay, excellent. And it's not as badly lit as I was worried about. It's big sun right there. Very picturesque. All right, all right, EVA bill. Just flop down, yes, as Kerbals do. And take that surface sample. Yes, it's completely frozen. That's why we sent you here. Oh, it's the Tundra. That's interesting. Uh, spacesuit was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, you're probably warmer in your spacesuit than you would be otherwise. I don't think you can grab up, uh, let's see. Uh, no, your jetpack is completely useless around here. Let's recover you first, and then we'll recover the rest of the stuff. Okay, so Bill's little uh, excursion got us 11 points, but let's get the rest of the science. And here we can see D1, and we're going to recover it. And get 59, uh, 9 on 60 science from that. So that's nice. But let us take a look at our, menace, our, our nemesis, if you will. Looks like uh, it'll reach its sun periapsis in eight days, and then it's going to smash into us. Well, I mean, it says it's going to escape, but it doesn't have a periapsis. I guess, can we sort of zoom in? I, I don't know. I really should look into how we see it. Uh, oh, uh, maybe, will we be able to see it on its approach? Uh, I don't think that's right. Maybe if we focus on Kerbin. Nope. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it's going to just smash into us. So, that's that one. Could track some of these others. Uh, which ones are extinction level sort of things? This one was a C class. Not really extinction level. Let's let's try and find E class, which is the real... Oh, there we go. Let, let's track this one. Okay, that one is uh, 36 days. Okay, let, well, let's not waste any time. Let's go to the research center to see what we can do with our new science. Obviously, we haven't gotten to any new parts yet, but we're we're, uh, we're at least going to get the advanced lighting. Let's let's get though. That's not enough. Me, I should say. I, I yeah, I think I should save my science to get the lighting. Oh, uh, the probes could be very useful. Actually, not really. It's always better to send a Kerbal. And we are a very safe space agency, so we don't need to worry about not being able to do that properly. Um, these parts are good. But uh, yeah, let, let's hold off. I think uh, we can do a little bit more science and uh, get these before 
moving on to bigger and better things. So I think this is a natural point to uh, stop. We've done all the all the really uh, near Kerbin science that uh, I want to do. We need to go off and uh, check out the moon and Minmus next. So uh, look forward to that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.